This one is going to be quite similar to this, this lesson that we did. So make sure we're simplifying both sides first. That means you might have to combine some like terms. Then look to see if it's a power two polynomial or a power two equation or not. If it is, we know what to do in that case. I just gave that to you. See, lots of good work so far, lots of good distribution, lots of good showing steps, I like that. Remember, if you have an x squared up there, that means you're going to factor. And that means you have to get everything to one side and zero on the other side, because otherwise the zero product property won't work. So make sure when you see that on your problems. You say, oh, there's a square factor. Get it, get it over one side and then factor. Chances are you're going to want to keep the x squared term positive, so move things according to that. We're going to start in just a minute up here. Okay, we're going to get started here. Of course, the first thing that we want to do is we want to distribute because we're going to simplify both sides on this. So after distribution, we should hopefully have 8x squared plus 24 plus 4. You have the left side? On the right hand, right hand side, remember that we're distributing negative 8x. I always like to circle that. That way I see it in my head. I, I, I kind of pictured it took a mental picture that helps me to distribute it exactly to both these terms and get it right. So negative 8x times x, what are we going to get out of that? Negative Yeah, exactly. Don't forget that x squared. That's important. That has to be there. Otherwise, your problem just blows up your face. The next one, what are we going to have? Plus or minus? Minus 24. Good, 24. Is it 24? 24 x? That x is important, right? That x has to go with it. You're multiplying by that x. It's got to be there. And then this plus 19 is at the back end. Now again, you do have options. You could move these to this side or these to this side. What we're going to do first is combine like terms and probably move these ones over here because of that negative 8x squared. We want to make that positive somehow. Are you with me on that? Did you do that? Good, okay. So combine like terms here, we'll have our 8x squared plus 28 equals negative 8x squared minus 24x plus 19. And we'll start moving all this stuff. 
So the first thing we'll move. <clears throat> By the way, can you do this all at once? If you, if you show your steps, you can. That's fine. Just don't don't lose yourself on it. I go step by step. That way, I don't get lost. So we'll get our 16x squared. We still have this plus 28 on the right hand side. We have our negative 24x plus 19. We'll continue. The next thing we got to do, we got to add that 24x. It's got really nowhere to go over here, so we'll put this in the correct order and get 16x squared plus 24x plus 28. And we still have this 19 over the right hand side. We learned from our last example and from before that it's got to be a zero, so there's one more thing we have to do. We're going to subtract 19 from both sides. And we'll be left with 16x squared plus 24x, I think that's plus 9, isn't it? Yes. So what clued us in on what to do on this problem? First, it wasn't simplified, you had to simplify it. Second, we got down here, we saw some x squareds, right? Whenever you see that x squared that says, get everything to one side, after you combine like terms, get everything to one side, that's right here, you gotta make sure that's a zero because a zero product property will work only if this is a zero. Now we're gonna factor this thing. So hopefully you set up a diamond problem. What goes on the top of our diamond problem? How about the bottom? Oh yeah, because you multiply 16 times 9. Wow, that looks really familiar. I think we had one really similar to this last time. And we get what? Hey, does this have the extra step or not? Yes. Awesome. So we're going to split this up and get the 16x squared plus 12x plus 12x plus 9, and that's still equal to 0. This lets us do our factor by grouping. Are you starting to get that down, that factoring by grouping? Is it starting to really make sense to you? I hope it is. If it's not, come and see me or review this lesson online and you can see this over and over again. We'll get our 4x out of that. We should get a 4x plus 3. And on the right hand side, we're going to factor out, yeah, exactly, and get a 4x plus 3. Again, we've done it right because we have exactly the same thing here and here. That's perfect. It's what we want. So we're going to take this piece and this piece and factor that out. And what we're left with is the same factor. We actually could write it as 4x plus 3 squared. If you want to do that, you can do that. And then we're going to set each of these equal to 0. However, there's only one unique factor, so we're going to set that one equal to 0. We'll have our 4x plus 3 equals 0. If we solve that down, what are we going to end up getting? Perfect. By a show of hands, how many people got negative three fourths out of this? Could you check your work, by the way? Yeah. It'd be kind of a pain, right? I mean, you have to plug that into that. But you could do it. A calculator would do it pretty easily. It's not too bad. <clears throat> well, I'm glad you feel good with that example. You're going to get a couple of these. Make a little note. You might end up getting one of these on a test. Okay, so that, I'll, I'll tell you that often. And if I tell you that, there's like a 99% chance you're going to get one of these on a test. So you'll probably get one of these on a test. But we're ready to move on. Let's kind of combine what we just learned about this factoring and these equations. We'll make it a little bit more interesting. We'll add some fractions to it and see if the same thing we learned on the very first day applies to these, these problems. Okay. Let's move on. By the way, are there any questions before we get going? You guys know you can ask questions anytime, right? So if something's not too clear to you, just let me know. We're good? All right. Back to your favorite, right? You love fractions, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't that look awesome? Aren't you excited for this problem? It's like Christmas. In what month is this? August? We're like four months early, folks. It's cool. Now, I'm just messing with you. 
But yeah, we have some fractions on this problem. Now, the first thing we learned about fractions is, what did we learn about fractions? You didn't learn anything about fractions? Get rid of them by using... So we can get rid of them, right? Since we don't like them, we're going to get rid of these fractions. I hope, aren't we? What lets you know, though, I've asked you this before, what lets you know that you can get rid of these fractions up here? There's one specific thing, and if it's not there, you cannot do this step. We're, we're, gonna be, we're not going to talk about GCF yet. That's when we're factoring things out. The, say that again. There's an equal sign. Yeah, that's right. If you have an equal sign, this works. Do you know why? I, I'll just focus on me for a second, okay? Do you know why if you have an equal sign, this works, and if you don't, it doesn't work? Do you know why? It's the fact that an equal sign creates two sides of something, right? And whatever you do to one side, you get to do to the other side. If you don't have an equal sign, there's no sides. Do you see what I'm talking about? That means you can't just arbitrarily multiply everything by one number and it stays the same. With an equal sign, we get to do that. Because if I multiply this by the LCD and this by the LCD, it stays equal. That's why the equal sign is so nice. If we don't have the equal sign, all bets are off, we can't do this. Did that make sense to you? Okay. So, now we did this earlier with some simpler looking problems, but what's the first step in, in getting rid of these fractions? What do we look for right off the bat? Let's find the LCD. Let's do that. How many denominators do we have? So we're considering all three of these denominators. Technically we have four because you could put this over one, but that one's really not going to do a whole lot for us. Notice how the X, folks, the X does not play into our LCD. Are you clear on that? Are you, are you sure you're clear on that? Because really this is like x over 1, and these are our denominators. So that's why that, that x is not going to play a part in this. So our LCD, can you look at that for me? What is our LCD, please? Yeah, yeah good. Take into account all four of those. Now, if you remember from last time, well, on Wednesday, what do we do with that LCD? Just the left side? Both, both sides. What's both sides mean? What, what do I mean by when we multiply both Every sides? Okay. So we're not just going to multiply this one and this one. What we're talking about is we're multiplying every single term by the LCD. Every one of them. So what we need from here is we're going to multiply this by 9, and this one by 9, and that one, and that one. Basically the same idea as before. Now, I would like you to do something for me as you're doing this. I forgot one thing. I intended on purpose to show you. But please, would you do me a favor? And right before you do this, right before you use your LCD, there's something that needs to be up there. And this is going to kind of help you see a couple things. What needs to be up there is parentheses around any numerators that have more than one term. What I mean by that is this should have some parentheses around it. The 2, I don't care so much about that. The x, I don't care so much about that. But this one also needs parentheses. This is the important one in this case, and you're going to see that in just a minute. Okay, please be paying attention to this problem. This is going to bite a lot of people in the rear ends if they're not watching this right now, okay? Trust me on this one. So this, we're going to put parentheses around that. Now, the question is, am I going to distribute or am I going to simplify my fractions? What do you think? Simplify. Yeah, let's simplify. If we distributed, we'd have to refactor.